Hey everyone, in this video we're gonna we're being asked to find the 2020th derivative of our cosine function. So um, this is gonna be a good little practice video to get us more familiar with the derivative of our cosine function, as well as our other trig functions. And it's also gonna help us talk a bit more about these higher derivatives. Remember, the second derivative is just the derivative of the first derivative. I'm not sure if we've mentioned it yet, but there's a third derivative as well. The third derivative is the first derivative of the second derivative. The fourth derivative would be the derivative of the third derivative and so on. So if we want to find the 2020th derivative of our cosine function, we just have to differentiate cosine and all of its derivatives until we get there. Don't worry, we're not actually going to take uh, 2020 derivatives. We're going to figure out a shortcut to get us to the 2020th derivative as quick as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. Remember our starting function f of x is just our cosine function, and we already know the first derivative of our cosine function. That is our negative sine function, and now we need to keep going. Right, uh, Take one down, pass it around, only 2019 more derivatives to go. So if we take the uh, derivative of our first derivative, that's how we create our second derivative. And so the second derivative of our cosine function is really nothing more than the first derivative of our negative sine function. And well, we know the derivative of our sine function already, and if we multiply our function by negative one, we just have to multiply its derivative by negative one as well. That's one of our uh, derivative rules, that constant multiple rule. So if we want to find the derivative of negative sine of x, that'll be negative one times the derivative of sine, and we know the derivative of sine is cosine. So the derivative of negative sine of x is negative cosine of x, and that is the same as saying the second derivative of cosine of x is negative cosine of x. We're a bit closer to our goal of finding the 2020th derivative of our cosine function, but next up is the third derivative. So to find the third derivative of our cosine function, that's the same as just finding the derivative of our second derivative. So what is the derivative of negative cosine of x? It's just positive sine of x, right? If we didn't have that negative sign in front of our uh, function, we know the derivative of cosine is negative sine. But since we have that negative sign in front of our cosine function, we have to multiply the derivative of just cosine by negative one. And that turns our negative sine function back into the positive sine function, okay? So let's keep going, picking up some steam now. Remember, we switch our prime notation ever so slightly once we get past the third derivative. In our superscript, our exponent, we put the number of the derivative we are currently taking inside of uh, its own little set of parentheses. Those parentheses are important, so we don't uh, mix it up with taking like the fourth power of our function f. This is telling us to take the fourth derivative of our function f, the fourth derivative of cosine. But we can see from our list so far, the fourth derivative of cosine is just going to be the derivative of our third derivative, the derivative of sine. And well, we learned previously the derivative of sine is cosine. So now, if we uh, look at our table so far, we can keep it going, find the fifth derivative, sixth derivative, seventh derivative, and so on. But we started to get some repetition in our list. And we can exploit that pattern to take us to the 2020th derivative uh, much quicker than actually listing them all out. Every time we take a, a fourth derivative of cosine, and it also happens to be true for sine, every time we take the fourth derivative of one of these basic trig functions, we get back to where we started, right? We don't need to write the fifth derivative here because the fifth derivative is the derivative of cosine, and we already have that on our table. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is our fifth derivative, sixth derivative, seventh derivative, eighth derivative, and well, we could keep going. This would be our ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, right? We don't have to count this one up here because it's already included uh, in our list down there. Um, and we also don't need to actually count like that all the way up to 2020. There's a quicker way to get that. And that's to kind of think of 2020 as some multiple of four or being really close to some multiple of four. In fact, if we try to think of 2020 as some multiple of four, 2020 is really just four times 505. 
run through our list 505 times, we get right back to where we started and we land on our 20 and 20th derivative of our cosine function. So every time we hit that derivative that is a multiple of four, we'll be kind of right here on our list back to where we started. And since 2020 is a multiple of four, well, we're going to end up right where we started at a cosine of x. So long story short, the 20 20th derivative of our cosine function is still our cosine function. So an interesting follow-up question would be, uh, what is the 2019th derivative? What is the 21st derivative? And once you know those, you can basically find them all. All right, everyone. So in this example, we are asked to find the uh, first derivative of our sine squared function. And we're given a little bit of a helpful hint. We want to use the product rule to find the derivative of this function. Uh, in a later section, we're going to learn another derivative technique called the chain rule. And in practice, that's actually going to be uh, the quickest and most efficient way to find the derivative of a power of a trig function. But until we have that rule, uh, the product rule is what we're going to have to use. So to get started, uh, in order to use the product rule, we have to think of our sine squared function as a product of two functions. So, so instead of representing our function as sine squared of x, we just have to remember what the exponent of 2 uh, indicates. It's repeated multiplication. Sine squared of x is the same as sine of x times sine of x. So now we can really view our sine squared function as a product of two functions. Both of them happen to be sine of x. So we'll be able to use our product rule to find the derivative of this function. u and v are both the same. They are both our sine function. And I'll make finding u prime and v prime, v prime pretty easy, right? They're, they're going to be the same derivative since they're the same function. And we know the derivative of sine is cosine. All right, so now we have the uh, four components or pieces we need to construct the derivative of our sine squared function using the product rule. So let's go ahead and put it all together. The derivative with respect to x of sine squared of x, according to our product rule, is going to be u prime times v. That's going to be cosine times sine. And then we have to add to that u times v prime. That's going to be sine times cosine. I'm going to reorder the multiplication there because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. We can also write that as cosine of x times sine of x. So we have like terms here, two copies of the same thing. We can combine those like terms and see that our derivative is just 2 cosine of x times sine of x. So that is the derivative of our sine squared function. Uh, that's one way to leave it. This next step is not necessary at all, but if you remember some of your trig identities, you might recognize the product 2 sine of x times cosine of x, or 2 cosine of x times sine of x, is our double angle identity or formula for our sine function. So if we wanted to, we could actually rewrite this as sine of 2x. Welcome back, everyone. In this video, we have a kind of an application example I wanted us to look at. So we're told for x values greater than or equal to 0, this function f, which is defined as cosine divided by the quantity x plus 1, uh, gives us the height of an object attached to a vertical spring. Um, it's not written here, but thinking about x as representing time, like maybe seconds, and the output would be some uh, unit of distance, maybe like meters. And so we want to find an equation that describes the velocity of the object. And to get us started, we have to remember that really important interpretation for our derivative. We actually have a few. Remember, the derivative of a function uh, geometrically is the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of that tangent line has that interpretation as the instantaneous rate of change of our function. If our function of interest is a position function, then its derivative or the slope of its tangent line would then describe the instantaneous rate of change of position. And that's what we call velocity or speed if we're ignoring direction. So the velocity of our object is just going to be given by f prime of x, the first derivative of our function. So to find our velocity function, we just have to differentiate our function f here. And remember, our function f, we can think of it as two pieces, uh, the cosine of x in the numerator and x plus 1 in the denominator. 
we're dividing those or we have a quotient. So to find our derivative, we need our quotient rule. These derivatives should be pretty quick for us to find with our shortcuts. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of v or the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, right? The derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of 1 or any constant is 0. So now we can construct f prime of x, the derivative of our function. This is our velocity function. It's just u prime times v minus u times v prime all over v squared. So let's look at that first piece, u prime times v. It's going to be negative sine of x times the quantity x plus 1. We have to subtract away from that u times v prime. Well, u times v prime is just 1 times cosine of x. Then we have to divide this whole thing by v squared. That's going to be the quantity x plus 1 that gets squared. So we pretty much have our velocity function found here. We might just clean this formula up a little bit. And by that, we can really just really distribute that factor of negative sine. So we can write this as negative x times sine of x, right? You don't want to write that as negative sine of x times x. That can be a little confusing. Like, is that, are these x's being multiplied together? They're certainly not. This x up here, Remember, it's actually inside of our sine function, and this x over here is inside our cosine function. That's a kind of a common mistake to make, so try to avoid that. Putting parentheses around it can help. Uh, so if we keep distributing that negative sine factor, next we'll get negative sine of x times 1, which gives us negative sine of x. And then we have that last term of negative cosine of x in our numerator. In our denominator, we almost never expand without some good reason to for the quotient rule. So we're just going to leave that as x plus 1 squared. So we have successfully found the uh, velocity of this uh, object attached to a spring. The velocity at any time x is going to be given by this function right here, negative x times sine of x minus sine of x minus cosine of x all over x plus 1 squared. This function doesn't simplify to something very nice, but that's the way it is sometimes.